Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, um, whether you are here in person or watching us on live stream. Hello. Um, I just uh, want to talk for very briefly um, about how I got into editing on Wikipedia. Um, I'm a scholar in 19th century American literature, and Margaret Fuller is one of my favorite um, authors from the period, and she is um, both an amazing figure, um, a very early feminist, and she's also someone who I read as bisexual or pansexual. And um, I was teaching last semester, and I uh, noticed on her Wikipedia page that it was really out of date. Even though it was a featured article, it hadn't really been updated with resources or articles written in the last 10 years very much, and I really wanted to make some edits and I ended up in conversation with a long history of people who have been working on that page um, and needing to engage in the talk page and explain why I was making those edits and um, why my students were making those edits. And um, I realized how involved um, I could become in Wikipedia and also how much the language is gendered and articles are gendered um, and like most articles of women um, are about like what famous person they're married to or something like that, whereas a lot of articles about famous men don't include anything about their spouses um, until in the about life section. Um, and so um, just guiding my students in editing, I realized how much I left, had left to learn, and so I got involved in going to the art and feminism um, trainings and events and um, learned a little bit from there and met Megan Wacha in the um, way to organizing this event and um, just wanted to get more people involved um, in editing Wikipedia, particularly women, and also more people querying Wikipedia. Um, and so I'm really excited to hopefully um, be part of, uh, be more a part of um, what's going on right now, getting more particularly women involved in editing Wikipedia articles, because I think it was a study from 2011, but I think it, yeah, a study from 2011, um, if you Google gender bias in Wikipedia, um, showed that less than 10% of Wikipedia editors and contributors are women. And so I'm really excited. Thank you all for being here. Um, we have a great lineup for today. We're going to do this live streamed um, workshop um, and if you um, aren't here in person, you can also access all of the links um, through this uh, Google slide presentation. There's a very quick bit.ly link. It's bit.ly slash capital F futures underscore capital E ed um, underscore capital W Wikipedia um, and follow along. And you can also follow us on Twitter with the hashtags, um, hashtag fight for edu and hashtag digital GC. Um, so we'll have this workshop for an hour. And then we're going to have open um, drop in, drop out editing hours. Um, and then at 3.30, Lori Hurston from the TLC is going to guide us in talking about how to use Wikipedia in the classroom. Um, so now Megan Watch is going to take it away from Wikimedia NYC and help us get started. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Um, and thank you so much, Christina, for um, organizing today and for bringing us all together in both uh, these physical and virtual rooms. Um, this, I have to say, this editathon in particular uh, kind of hits very close to my wiki heart. Um, I first started editing because of that same uh, article back in 2011. Um, and so I remember I got angry and I wanted to change something. And so I decided we were going to hold our first edit-a-thon at Barnard College. Um, we set the date, we invited people, we ordered the snacks, and only then did we uh, teach ourselves to edit so that we could teach others to do the same. Um, and it's really grown into this wonderful relationship with um, the Wikipedia project, the Wikimedia movement, um, and uh, the larger uh, free culture initiatives, which I think are very much aligned to the work that we all do um, here at CUNY. Um, so I usually like to start out just with a brief introduction to Wikipedia. Um, because uh, while Wikipedia is largely known, it is not always um, uh, widely uh, understood. Um, so what is Wikipedia? 
Well, Wikipedia was launched in 2001. Um, and over the course of the last 18 years, it has grown into the largest reference work on the internet and the fifth largest website in the world. People visit Wikipedia and its sister projects in the Wikimedia movement 15 billion times each month, which uh, translates to 6,000 visits every second of every day. Right? So the power that the Wikipedia project and the Wikimedia movement as a whole have um, is pretty enormous for the connected world. And so it's critical that each of us um, contribute to it so it can properly reflect our own histories and experiences. Wikipedia is very much a multilingual international project. So while most of us in this room are largely familiar with English Wikipedia, whether um, going directly to the uh, site to uh, settle a bet with a friend or conducting a Google search and seeing that little box pop up in the right hand corner. Um, but there are actually let's see, 292 Wikipedias in over 300 languages each with their own community of editors, with their own sets of policies and practices. Um, and I will admit, I uh, will never understand the math of those 292 <laughs> Wikipedias in 300 languages. I know that um, uh, the Klingon Wikipedia has been sunset. Um, but what this also means is that we're consistently um, setting up new Wikipedias each year. So um, over the course of the last few years, we've been setting up um, more Wikipedia is focused on um, indigenous languages and knowledge. So if there is a language that you are interested, that you work with, you read, you write, and that Wikipedia does not yet exist, there are ways to create it. So on English Wikipedia, um, we are steadily approaching 6 million articles, which is a huge feat. I'm very proud of everyone. Um, but behind those almost 6 million articles are 45 million pages that document the epic machinery behind the project itself. So those are uh, pages about the editors that write Wikipedia, um, the articles that they write, the discussions they have, the decisions that they make, Wikipedia even has its own manual of style, although I will never really recommend that you read it. <laughs> Wikipedia is also one of what are 12 projects in the Wikimedia movement, including Wikimedia Commons, where we can find openly licensed uh, images and other types of media, um, Wiki Voyage, or Voyage, if you're feeling particularly fancy, where after um, taking a trip to Gateway National Recreation Area, I can go in and uh, update everyone on how to get there with, via the bus. Um, we have um, Wiktionary, Wiki News, and our newest project, uh, Wikidata. But at the core of Wikipedia is a community of volunteer editors and the active working environment in which they operate. My friend uh, Phoebe Ayers often likes to describe this um, as a working newsroom. And I think it's really um, important to have that image in our head, especially when we enter um, as new editors, right? That folks are already in this virtual space. They're working on particular projects, initiatives, um, focused on various subject areas. And so as we go in, um, it's important to be a part of that community, to take part in conversations, and um, uh, to weigh in on discussions that are already being had. This community, while well, yes, largely um, heterosexual cis men from the global north um, is actually, for me, uh, one of the most radically inclusive um, spaces in which I've ever operated. Um, we have a lot of people that look a lot of different ways and come from a lot of different backgrounds and experiences. The thing that we um, share is a belief, this is our tagline, um, that every human deserves access to the sum of all human knowledge. Now, whether or not that is possible, whose knowledge um, we represent, um, 
uh, whose knowledge uh, we choose uh, to bring into this project, you know, becomes a more contentious area. Um, but I say it because this community comes together and has written this um, largest reference work on the internet by agreeing to five rules, which are often referred to as the five pillars. Um, I sometimes take a step back before I do this because sometimes it feels a little dated, right? We have these five pillars. They were established a long time ago. Um, but for me, they really are the central elements when we first enter the Wikipedia realm. The first is that Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. Um, so this is really key that when we enter um, this room, we may come in with an idea of writing an article about a friend, writing an article about ourselves. Um, but Wikipedia is very clear that it's not to be used um, as an adverti advertising platform or a vanity press. Instead, it is there to represent the sum of knowledge. So um, to pull from existing scholarship that already is out there. Make this a little bit bigger for folks. I apologize that those in the live stream uh, can't see the screen itself. The second pillar is that Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. Now, I think we all know in this room that that is impossible. <laughs> um, it's a thing. In my day life, uh, I'm a librarian here at CUNY, um, and it's a thing that we all also grapple with uh, in that particular information space is the um, neutrality in libraries and that it does not exist. Um, instead, I really think about this as Wikipedia, um, when we enter the Wikipedia space, it is not to make an argument, right? So whereas when we're writing an article for a class or we're writing our dissertation, we may be there and using different sources um, to support our new argument that we are contributing back out to the scholarly literature. When we are writing Wikipedia, we are representing um, existing magazines, newspapers, um, academic journal articles, and book chapters. And in writing for the public audience, the Wikipedia readership, um, we write about it in an encyclopedic way, right? So trying to use um, simple, publicly accessible language um, and really summarizing complex ideas into a single point. pillar says that Wikipedia is free content that anyone can use, edit, and distribute. Um, I know some folks kind of like to pass by this one. Uh, for me, it is one of the most radical of our pillars, right? The idea that um, all of these volunteers are coming together because they want folks to have access to the sum of all human knowledge. We believe that knowledge and information are a right. And in turn, um, so we um, openly license all of our content. Wikipedia as a project, all of the contributions that you make today will be made available under a Creative Commons attribution share alike license. Which means that if after you leave today, you want to go and print out the pages of the article that you just wrote and include it in an open textbook, that's a thing you can do. If you want to then go and sell it, it's a thing you can do there as well. This is also really core to um, Wikipedia and to Wikipedians because many times paywalled literature um, becomes a barrier to representing um, certain communities and their knowledge and to having those articles challenged once we put them up on the project. So I often think back to um, working with a course a few years ago. Um, we had a student who wrote the article for Massage Noir. Um, there were very few publicly available resources. And so, no surprise, she wrote the article, posted it to Wikipedia, and it was immediately challenged, right? It was challenged by other Wikipedians for notability um, because they weren't familiar with the term and they thought someone was using it to promote themselves and their work. But as we engaged in the conversation with the Wikipedia community, it quickly became clear that it wasn't necessarily that they were against representing um, massage noir as a term on Wikipedia. It's that they didn't have access to the same literature that we did. 
And so when we were able to share that and verify the works that were being put out, the article stayed. And it grew with time into the article that it is today. And so to that point, we really encourage that as you enter the Wikipedia community, um, that we treat each other with respect and civility. Um, you'll often see the acronym um, AFG, or no, AGF, um, assume good faith. The way that I think about this um, is a way that um, Jenna Friedman and the MALS program uh, once uh, talked to me that like, you know, when we're um, having conversations online, whether it's in an email, a listserv, or a Twitter thread, to read these messages as if the other person is smiling, right? That sometimes um, just putting language out there very succinctly can come off as a little bit brusque, right? But instead, if we see a smiling face on the other side, right, um, the spaces in which we operate can be a little bit more welcoming. The final of the pillars is a key one in that Wikipedia has absolutely no firm rules. Much as Wikipedia is the encyclopedia that anyone can edit, it is the community that anyone can edit. And that's exactly what we're doing today. That when we see something that we want to change and that needs to be changed, we can't go in and just make the decision that it's moved, but we can enter discussions and we can advance um, particular approaches to the knowledge that we represent. Or, as we say, we can be bold, right? Be bold, but not reckless, right? Go in, create the article, be prepared to defend the article, um, and you know, engage in those discussions with your colleagues in this open movement. Okay. So that's Wikipedia. Before we go into how to edit Wikipedia, um, for me, it's always key to first learn how to read Wikipedia. So here we have the article for Bell Hooks. And it's a pretty good article. We see some of the things that we are used to seeing um, within the space of a Wikipedia article. So we see a summary at the top, right, which says um, who Bell Hooks is um, and why she is notable, what she has contributed, right? If I'm coming to the Bell Hooks Wikipedia article, what do I need to know if I'm only sitting there and I have 30 seconds? We have what's often referred to as the info box, um, where we have a photograph of Hooks and uh, more succinct information. Um, this is actually what feeds in uh, using microdata into the Google platform when you conduct that little search and like it pops up in the right hand corner. Um, that's often pulling from Wikipedia. Are there any ideas why um, this particular photo was chosen? Yeah? Public domain? Yeah, public domain. Um, so, we might notice that oftentimes when we go to Wikipedia, there's a photograph of someone um, mid-conversation. Maybe they're on a panel. Um, if they're an actor, um, maybe they're on a panel at Comic-Con, right? Um, that's because everything on Wikipedia is openly licensed, right? And we need to hold the copyright to those works in order to share them widely. So um, it can be hugely beneficial that if you are going to different talks, around the city or here at CUNY to take photographs of the scholars with their permission <laughs> and then um, upload them to Wikimedia Commons, right? So that their articles can be illustrated. I especially like to ask people, show them the photograph and ask if they're okay with it, right? Because once it's out there, um, it's out there for good. And I will, I will say there are many photos of me on the Commons with my eyes closed and my mouth open, like, <laughs> so. Let's spare everyone the, those moments. If we scroll down, we can see in the left-hand navigation um, all of the other Wikipedias that also have articles about bell hooks, right? So if you read or speak another language, there's always the option of going in and translating it into that language um, on that Wikipedia. So that's 
that's the article space. At the top of the article space, and you'll notice that I'm not logged in, right? This is something that's always been there and that we can see. We can actually go in and see the history of how this article was created and how knowledge was constructed over time. So I'm going to select the View History tab. And we said that if I stepped away from the microphone, people would still be able to hear me? OK, mm -hmm. good, because I've been, I've been trying to stay close uh, with the live stream in mind. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. So if we look at the history, um, first, it's a lot of blue and black, right? Um, but there are a few key elements. One is that every edit that we make to Wikipedia is saved in perpetuity, right? Um, including vandalism, not including any efforts to dox someone. Okay, um, so we see key elements. We see the date of the edit. So the most recent edit was today. We see the name, the username of the person who edit made that particular edit. Um, and this is typically why I recommend that when we create our user pages, we don't do first name, last name, and our home address, right? Um, we can see a summary of that edit. Um, and in this case, apparently someone had gone in and capitalized bell hooks, and the editor came in and corrected that edit. Okay. Below it, um, we can see what is referred to as an IP address, right? So you don't actually need an account in order to edit Wikipedia, but if you don't have an account, it will capture your location via your IP address. So in order to protect um, your personal identity, I always recommend making sure you're logged in before you start making your edits. Okay. My favorite thing to do with the view history is to go back and look at the first edit that was ever made um, for a particular article. Sometimes they're really funny. That's not the case here. So I'm going to go to oldest, and then I scroll down. And I can see that the article for Bell Hooks was created in March of 2003 by user Antonio Martin. who apparently some of us in this room know. <laughs> and, um, and we can see that when this article started, right, so it's a pretty comprehensive article at this point. There are definitely still contributions that can be made. Um, but, uh, but it is a long article. But when it started, it started as what we refer to as a stub, right? So just three to five sentences saying who the individual is and why they're notable. Um, so Gloria Watson, born 1952, is a black feminist who is, uh, well, yes, I'm having trouble reading from the side. Um, so we see how this article started. And if we select at newer revisions, we can see that someone then added um, a short bibliography. And it steadily grew over time into the article that it is today. One of the reasons why I like going back and looking at how articles were constructed over time is because sometimes when I go into an article, I might see something that's like a little bit wonky, right? Like maybe it's emphasizing a particular perspective or a particular, if it's a biography, a particular moment in someone's life. And I might wonder why that's there, right? So this happened um, in a course that I was working with um, where we were focused on the life and work of Intozake Shange. Um, and there was, a considerable amount that was focusing on an early suicide attempt, right? And as we went back, it became very clear that at the time that the article was created, there wasn't a lot of scholarly literature out there about Shange in the same way. And what the editor was able to access was, um, was focused on that particular moment um, in her life. So we, together as a course, um, decided to be bold and we deleted a lot of it, and then added a great deal more. Okay, so we have the article, the view history. We haven't even gotten to edit yet. And then we have what's referred to as the talk page. 
So the talk page is we where, where we talk, yeah. Um, this goes back to that community, right? Um, this is a really great place to go in, um, particularly if you have a personal tie um, to a scholar and you want to make an edit, but you feel like you might have a conflict of interest. If you yourself have an article um, and you know you have a conflict of interest, this is where you can go in and create a new section and encourage other Wikipedians to make particular edits. It's also where we can go in and um, engage in discussions about the edits that we're making. So when editing Wikipedia, I might put a little bit of content in. One of my fellow Wikipedians might have some questions about it and take it out. And it's very important that we don't do that back and forth, um, engaging in what is often known as um, an edit war. Instead, we move to the talk page to have that discussion. And if we look at the um, discussion for the Bell Hooks article, we can see that the archive goes back. Um, we can also see that it has um, grappled with, you know, what name do we use to title the article or use within um, the actual content of it? Do we capitalize or not capitalize, right? Communicating things out to other Wikipedians um, that may not be um, immediately transparent or they might not have experienced um, in the realms in which they operate. <coughs> this is also where I can justify um, certain edits that are made. So for instance, um, when LIU locked out its faculty, um, it was very easy to go into the edit history and see that a lot of contributions that were being made came from an LIU IP address. Um, and there was an argument that one was able to make um, that it came from the communications department. So, through doing that, <laughs> doing that a little bit of investigative work, um, we were able to delete that content and justify the deletion on the talk page, right? And so these are the different ways in which the tabs can be used together. Okay. But we are here to edit. Um, how many of you have come in with an article that you want to, that you know you want to edit or create? <laughs> Fantastic. It's okay. We have some suggestions. Um, lots of good suggestions. Um, so editing is, um, in and of itself, um, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Um, I decided that for today, um, I would edit on one of my former faculty members. Um, I had that moment of, is this potentially a conflict of interest? Um, but uh, he has not been uh, my professor for longer than I'd like to admit. Um, I was never and am not currently employed um, by him or you know, another larger body. Um, so I'm very comfortable that there isn't a conflict of interest today. When first going in to edit an article, Sometimes it can seem a little bit overwhelming, right? Because we have that moment of identifying absence, right? What isn't there? What can I contribute? And if I'm creating a new article, maybe that's removed, but I'm going to hit other barriers like how do I represent that this is notable, right? Where do I begin? For today, I'm going to strongly recommend that we edit existing articles, but if you want to um, create a new one, uh, myself and other Wikipedians and folks are here in the room um, to support you in that process. Now, there are a few different ways that I can contribute to this article. There's already a photograph, so if I have another photograph, I can um, get it from my phone, because that's all I ever use anymore, um, upload it to Wikimedia Commons, and move it into this space. I might choose to go in and make it a little bit more readable. Um, so there are definitely Wikipedians that we uh, refer to as gnomes that like to go in and make like tiny little edits um, that really improve uh, the readability of the article and actually make it easier for other editors to move in and start working in that space. Ooh. 
Um, there aren't any recommendations from other editors about what I might do. Whereas if I went into the Bell Hooks article, again, I know I saw it earlier, yep. I might see a note that makes recommendations about what I can contribute. So in this case, um, it's saying that maybe we need to add additional citations, that this section is largely built upon primary resources that are close to the person. And so for the purposes of um, verifiability, we're going to want some secondary resources, um, which again in the wiki world includes newspaper articles. I know it doesn't um, in lots of other realms. Um, but in this case, I noticed that there is an absence of an award. Um, I really like adding in awards um, because it is one way to continue to show notability. And when I look at this article, I see it really only has three references. And for an article that only has three references, its stickiness isn't there as much, right? Usually you're going to want three to five separate references in order to make an article persist. So I want to add another one as well as an award. Now I did my research off site. Here at CUNY um, we are under the IP address so the library's resources are going to be really useful and those are also going to be resources that other Wikipedians may not have access to so you'll be able to represent new areas of knowledge that really aren't there. I was limited to the open web, so I went to Google and conducted a Google search with the name of the article, and I added interview. For a living person, it can be really helpful to find um, different interviews where they're talking about themselves, um, and I can bring that into the content of the article. So I found an interview and some ads. <laughs> um, it mentions um, that one of his uh, books won the Errol Hill Award. Um, and I could choose to use this source to add this into Wikipedia. But if the award exists, it probably has a website that's going to be an even better source. So I found that. One of the benefits of this site is that it also provides additional context um, so that uh, if one doesn't know what the Errol Hill Award is, it's here, it's written. You can also go in and create that Wikipedia article as well. Okay. So I'm going to do the most amazing copy and paste. I'm going to go into the article. I'm going to log in. Right, because I don't, even though I'm not home, I don't want that IP showing up. And to be fair, I also want credit for my edits. Now that I'm in, you see that I have um, two choices. I can edit source, right, and that means going in and editing with a little bit of markup, or I can choose to use what's referred to as the visual editor, where it really looks a lot more like a Microsoft Word page. So we have edit for the visual editor and edit source. I prefer to teach using edit source. Um, they're both really great, but the reason why I prefer teaching using edit source is because one, the markup really, it's like new but not scary, right? Um, also, uh, there are still some things that you can only do with the source editor that you can't do with the visual editor. So now we see the markup. And I'm going to make my contribution. I always have this moment before I make my first edit, even now, years <coughs> later, where I'm like, ah, you know, my grammar's kind of terrible. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really know that I can go in and make this contribution. Um, but then I remember that I'm supported by a community, right? And that if I can go in and represent the knowledge, if I get the words a little bit wrong, there's someone there who really wants to fix it for me. 
Okay. Let's see. So it is published by the University of Minnesota Press and won the uh, Errol. I think I even have a spelling error in there. It's okay. I can go back and correct it. In. I'll provide more context. Well, I can just add it all later. This is great. Okay. Now I want to go in and add a citation. When adding a citation, that central component of every Wikipedia article, um, we are not putting it in MLA citation format or APA or any of the existing citation formats. Instead, we put it into a wiki markup um, that allows it to be a little bit more machine readable. The good news is that I don't need to know that markup in order to create the citation. I can select cite from the editor at the top. I'm going to, from the templates, cite a web resource. Again, I can go in and provide more information later. Um, and I include the URL. One of the great things over the course of the last uh, few years is that there's been a partnership between the Wikimedia Foundation and the Internet Archive. So um, there is now a bot that actively crawls Wikipedia, doesn't happen in real time, and takes a snapshot of any web pages that we cite in Wikipedia so that those edits can last. Now I'm going to select insert. Can you just show where you, felt, where you got that? Of course. Um, so I select site, oh. templates, web. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes the templates that are available and the source that I have don't quite match up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a librarian and a Wikipedian and I still shrug at it. You know, I just, I put it in. Then I want to provide that little summary of my edit. And my changes are now live. That's it. Um, the wiki in Wikipedia actually comes from uh, the Hawaiian word for quick, right? In that we can have a community that is actively and collaboratively editing a website, a public website, quickly together. Yeah, um, there was a question from Twitter that I just wanted to ask in the room, mm -hmm. actually, which is, um, on this article in particular, there's some references and some external links. What's the difference between those two? And um, yeah, what's the difference? How do you decide how they get out of it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, and I'm just going to scroll down so everyone in this room can see it. Mm -hmm. So the references section are supporting the statements that are made in the content of the article itself, right? So that is where. Um, I am verifying all of the statements that are made. And one of the key parts about um, editing Wikipedia is that we can't make any sort of assumptions about known knowledge, right? So if I say a thing, right, um, I'm like, what's, what's a very straightforward thing we would expect everyone to know? Like, Barack Obama is married to Michelle Obama, right? Um, I need to have a citation for that, right? Because not everyone may be, you know, may be knowledgeable about that particular thing. Um, so adding citations really contributes to the strength of the article itself. But we also recognize that both Wikipedians and uh, Wikipedia readers may want to go out to other types of not to other sources of knowledge, right? And so the references are very good for that, right? Um, now folks can go to, um, when I add in that interview, right, they can find this interview that maybe they weren't going to come pull up in a Google search. Um, but we can also go to um, the bio from the performance studies program at NYU. Um, we can go do a direct link. Um, 
to the author's books. I think in this case, and I'm going to be honest, the external links don't do a lot of justice to the article itself. So that's something I might want to go in and edit. Some really strong external links, right, might be, let's see, if it's someone who has given their papers to uh, archives and special collections, right, a link to that finding aid, right, um, a link to their personal website, mm -hmm. right, other things that we can't actually include in the content of the Wikipedia article itself, right? A Wikipedia article um, does not link to external resources within the content of the article, right? That's not how we provide the citation. Um, but we can include that information that readers may want, that other Wikipedians may want within the external links. Can I add something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just to add, um, I think that What's important too is that the CD is linked, that the article itself does not read like a CD, um, mm -hmm. because Wikipedia is not meant to be a CD. Um, and so I think like that's an appropriate place if you wanted an external link to a CD, but like when creating an article or adding things, like it shouldn't be listed like a CD, it should really read like an, an encyclopedia entry yeah. instead. Yeah, that's a really great point. Are there any other questions? Great. I just yeah. have one question. Is, um, if you're editing a page, right, yeah. and you encounter lots of you know, statements without any kind of citation, mm -hmm. um, what do you recommend doing about that? Um, do you recommend, let's, let's say you can't find a citation or something, do you recommend deleting that information because it doesn't have the citation or making a note of it? Mm -hmm. That's you, such a good question. <laughs> Um, so this comes up a lot, right? So one of the things that I might do is I might go and look for citations that support those statements, right? right? Um, and that can be really helpful, especially to a newer article that is still in the process of being created. Um, the other thing I might do, right, like say you can't find those. Yeah. So I'm gonna be honest, um, Especially as a new editor, getting at Wikipedia documentation can kind of sometimes be a little bit onerous, right? Yeah. Um, so if I was familiar with that cartoon of citation needed, I might know that. I will say um, one of the ways that you can search the documentation of Wikipedia is by putting in the search bar at the top, putting WP colon, right? And then I can start typing, and it automatically pops up, citation needed. And so I can look for the markup to go and add to this article. It's going to have a lot of documentation and you know, text around it. The other thing I can do is, um, I hate to advocate for Google here, <laughs> but is that you can go to Google and say Wikipedia citation needed and it's pretty good at coming to um, the documentation. This is also a way that like let's say I wanted to go in and add an info box to this article right to make things a little bit more structured. I can go and grab the temp the markup um, just by going to Google and saying you know info box person. I can also do the WP colon And usually it'll pull up the info boxes. Okay. Was there another question? No. Nope. Okay. Can I show what happened in my Margaret Fuller? Yeah. Action? Sure. Um, <clears throat> since I know that we're coming up on our first hour, I just wanted to. Oh, this goes in the opposite direction. Um, show a little bit of what can happen when you're teaching. Um, and Laura, Laurie Hudson is going to talk more about teaching in the last hour. Um, but just to quickly show, um, this is um, a featured article, which means it's kind of like, it's got like a gold star. It's like very, um, it's the d difference between like stub, right? Stub is kind of the beginning of an article and featured article is sort of like what you want it to become if it becomes a really big, um, article and so little did I know that when I started um, and if I go to the view history I can see 
all of these changes that were made. Um, and what happened was my students, one of them is April ZG, and the other one is Isra.ay, um, a few mistakes that were made. Um, one is that like I can spot them because they're in red. They never fully developed the pages for their usernames. Um, and that's what happens when you don't have anything um, on your own page. You show up as red, which means, I can't remember the official. What it means it? that the page doesn't exist because you haven't created it yet. Thank you. Um, and so it's a bit also of a red flag. Um, and it, I've learned, makes you look a little bit suspicious um, to other users. So my students went in and they started editing away um, and they gave some justification, um, like as you can see here, like I edit this portion to reflect a more comprehensive understanding of our conversations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this other user, uh, Midnight Drury, who specializes in Edgar Allan Poe, um, deleted a lot of the edits that my students made. Um, and not only, like, didn't just like click to undo them, but actually went into the articles and like deleted what had been said. And so I went in with the theory of like, well, if I echo these women entering Wikipedia and I help fix the issues in these citations um, with enough um, notes about the edits that are being made, then maybe they'll have more staying power. And so Midnight Jury and I ended up in quite a dialogue in, on the history page. Um, but what I noticed was, let me see, yeah, you can see me. One, mine shows up in blue because I put something on my page. Um, so I don't look as suspicious because I'm not in red. Um, and I put very, like a very comprehensive description of what I did in my edits and the reasons for it. And I included new citations um, to show where that information was coming from. And since that's near the top, and I don't think anyone has taken those out, they have a lot more staying power. Um, and so I just wanted to point out um, how important it is to include really comprehensive notes to also know how to do the citations and like practicing in citations first, um, as Megan has shown, is really important. Um, and also um, sometimes announcing that you're going to make changes on the talk page um, and what is going on with your class serum, if you don't mind talking about that a little bit more. Um, that's one of the things that you learn about gender bias in Wikipedia is that a lot of the um, articles that women um, create or like new users create um, or edit, um, sometimes the changes get reverted back. And I mean, Midnight Dreary lived up to the name because Midnight Dreary like worked at all hours of the night to undo these changes um, over the holidays. Um, so I wouldn't call this a war because it was still like very amicable, but it was definitely like a tense back and forth. Um, and if you go through like the history, you can see that this user has um, undone a lot of changes and is very protective of this article. And um, so one way of approaching that might be going onto the talk page and saying, hey, I noticed like things haven't been updated in about 10 years. Why do you keep deleting new changes? What's going on with that? Rather than like approaching it aggressively, just asking like, hey, why are you doing this um, on the talk page? Um, but another way to um, kind of try to make changes with staying power is to incorporate all of these details about um, issues that you're bringing up um, in the article. There's one more thing. Oh, um, do you mind also showing how to compare the old and oh, new? And yeah. So if you would like to see the changes between, let's, let's look for a good one. Yeah, you can go back to your other pages. Between Midnight Dreary's last edit and your last edit, we can select each of those and then compare them at the top. This is what we call comparing the diffs. 
D-I-F-F-S, comparing the differences. <laughs> And then if we scroll down, we start to see the highlighted text um, that shows us what changes were made. Right? So this can be really useful as you're working in an article um, that's also being edited um, by other wiki folks. So I would say um, we're going to get into editing in just one moment. Um, if it seems, was there a question? No? OK. If it seems like uh, we are focusing a lot on community and practices, um, I would say each of us operates within a particular discipline, right? And within each of those disciplines, you have various practices for communicating knowledge, for citing and sourcing knowledge, and for having conversations with your peers, right? Wikipedia is no different, right? And so oftentimes, we think that editing, like the difficult part is clicking edit and adding in a little bit of markup. But the truth is, is that um, sometimes uh, the greatest barriers, if you're not aware of the community, is how to engage with the community, the practices, and norms, right? Um, and so uh, one of the ways that happens um, is in the content of the article in the talk page, and if we want to make an edit to the talk page, it's actually, this is again, this is a place where um, visual editor does not exist. Um, it will soon, um, I am told. I'm like looking for confirmation in the room. I think it will, um, uh, but it doesn't now. And you can simply select at the top new section, right? You don't need to know how to navigate the whole page. It will give you the option of creating a new section. I'm not actually going to do that right now because I, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm saying, hey, I think this is all wrong, right? And then it's really key that I let other folks, it'll be in the edit history, but I easily let them know who said this thing. And we can do that by signing our comment. At the bottom of the source editor, is a quick link and a reminder to sign your posts on all talk pages. And so I can click it, and four tildes appear. I'm going to preview this edit just so we can see what it looks like. At that point, you see, I, you see I wrote, hey, I think this is all wrong. We see my username, a direct link to my personal talk page where Wikipedians that just want to talk to me, um, we can have a public conversation. And each of those are blue because those pages already exist. And it also gives it um, a date and timestamp. Um, I will say too, one of my greatest struggles when editing um, is response time. I mean, I would also maybe say in life. Um, <laughs> but because uh, um, uh, in the wiki community, we do tend to communicate very quickly, especially um, on more contentious areas. Um, and so uh, if I want to make sure that I am notified when other Wikipedians have made changes to that same page, they might ping me, but they might not. I can just select the star at the top of any page, and it will immediately add it to what is referred to as my watch list. Okay. Your watch list is where you can go and see all sorts of different types of articles um, or, and pages across Wikipedia and the changes that are actively being made. Um, so if we go to my list now, I'm actually very selective about what I do, so let's see. Yes, I want to leave this page without this edit. Uh, we can see the page for open access was recently edited, and I can go in and see what I think about that. Um, uh, you know, various various elements. Okay. There was a request on Twitter to show how to create your own page so that you don't show up as red as well. That's awesome, because we were just going to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So um, just by a quick show of hands, um, how many people don't have a Wikipedia account? Okay, so I need to count you actually. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if you don't have a Wikipedia account, um, that's okay. We can create it right now. Um, I will say uh, when we have so many people in a room, 
Um, if you have more than six people, try to create a Wikipedia account from a single IP address. Um, the system thinks that we're one person trying to do something sneaky, so it'll block us. If you get blocked because other people have been creating accounts, don't worry, we can create your account for you um, and go back and revisit um, all of this stuff. Um, but let's try to create your account. To do that, um, you can go to the top of the page, here, I'll log out for a second so we can see it. And select Create Account. Um, choose your username. Again, I recommend that it's not first name, last name, and where you live. Um, but it's something that unique is unique to you but doesn't identify you, right? So that means like your Instagram handles, your Twitter handles are also pretty identifying, okay? Um, I would recommend Sparkly Unicorn. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing that for years, and finally a student at Borough of Manhattan Community College took it the other week. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, add a password, um, and I do often uh, recommend adding your email address. This remains private, but it's going to um, allow you to retrieve your password when you forget it, because it happens to all of us. Okay. So I'm going to log back in. And we are all going to edit by creating our user page. Your user page is a place to share um, with other Wikipedians who you are, what informs your perspective, and what you're working on. User pages can look all sorts of different ways. I'm totally going to date myself right now. Some of them look like things that have badges and sparkles on them, you know, coming straight out of MySpace in its early days. Um, uh, some are very bare bones. Um, on mine, uh, because I am involved with a local nonprofit uh, that um, connects people and institutions to Wikipedia, um, I do. I am honest about, like, very clear and open about who I am in real life. Your user page, just like everything else on Wikipedia, saves every edit you ever make to it which means that I have no problem blanking mine right now. That's it, it's all gone. Okay, so uh, for folks who are logged in, just looking around, yes. Um, if you look at your username in the top, it appears red. As I said before, a red on Wikipedia um, when you link to other Wikipedia pages, those links uh, are blue. When they are red, it means it's linking to a page that does not yet exist because you haven't created it. So in this case, I want everyone to, I'm gonna just change the URL a little bit so that what I see is what you see. Um, I want everyone to select their user page, their username at the top, and then you're going to see a page that looks like this, and it's going to say start the user and then your username page. So let's select that. What if you don't like your user? I actually had an old, I created an old account. Like, could you change your username? You can change your username. Um, I, there is a way to do it. Um, I did it early on. Um, and I'm shocked that Megs was still available at the time that I did it. Um, you could also choose to create a new account, um, although that's not. Email account? Hmm? Can you use the same email account? Gosh, yeah. Oh, and a different Thank you. username. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good question because oftentimes we do join and we're like, here is my first name and my last name, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, we might get into some cont contentious areas today, but we might not, right? But you might want to later. Um, so I do recommend staying anonymous uh, until you can make a more informed choice about how you want to exist in the community. Um, okay, so now, uh, has everyone started their page? Great. Um, we can just type a thing. Um, hi, I'm learning how to edit as um, at an event at the Graduate Center. I'm sure to make all of the errors because uh, I'm at the front of the room. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the bottom and we can select publish changes. 
I do recommend selecting publish changes um, quite frequently because if someone else comes into the same page and also starts editing it, there might be a conflict. Um, also, sometimes your internet just kind of poops out um, and you want to make sure that whatever changes you're putting in are kept. Okay, so did folks do it? Yeah, you just made your first edits. Um, so then we can go in again. I'm going to select edit source. And maybe someone wants to know, well, what is the Graduate Center, right? It's a pretty broad term. So even in the source editor, right, I don't yet need to know all of the markup. I can highlight the text that I want to link. I want someone to be able to go and read the article about the Graduate Center. And if I select link, the little icon at the top that looks like a chain link fence, it says that the page exists. I'm going to be honest, I don't know if this is linking to the CUNY Graduate Center or a different Graduate Center. So I might do the very controversial thing because I'm not at the Graduate Center and type CUNY Graduate Center or, and it pops up, which I'm surprised by, there must be a redirect, I can go Graduate Center CUNY. And how did you insert link? I'll show that once more. So we can highlight the text that we want to link and then select the link from the um, toolbar above the editing box. And just so you see here, if I do Graduate Center CU, it's telling me that the page doesn't exist, right? So it's really helpful for knowing whether or not I'm linking to something that does or does not exist. I'll be honest, this is a tool I use um, all the time when I'm editing because I might know that a page exists for a particular person or topic, but I don't know the exact way that it's titled and I wanna make sure that the link is good. I mean, if not, I'll see the red, but then, you know, okay. So now I'm gonna select publish changes. Beautiful. And we can see it immediately now links to the Graduate Center. Now, one of the great things about Wikipedia is that there are things referred to as templates, um, which means that you can put in a tiny bit of markup and get something that you don't know otherwise know how to create, right? Um, one of my favorite ways for finding these things is just to go and like see what someone else did and copy and paste. Um, for user pages, I find it's really helpful to connect to what are referred to as wiki projects. Right? So these are projects where communities of editors have come together to edit on a particular topic. And so I want to have an easy link to a project. I also want to let other editors know that I'm a part of that project. So I'm going to make this bigger. And I'm going to add a squiggly bracket and a squiggly bracket. Um, I believe those are actually the technical terms. <laughs> And then capitalization matters, user, capital U, space, wiki, capital W, capital P for project, so user space, wiki project, space, feminism. I would have chose feminisms, but you know, it's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to close my squiggly brackets. And if I scroll to the bottom, publish changes and we can see that the user the user box uh, for this particular project now appears and it will directly link me um, to other editors who are interested in this topic other editors who I may want to um, engage with if I need support or um, uh, just kind of want input on how I'm representing something within the article space If I want to create a new article, I might start that new article in what's referred to as your sandbox. So your sandbox is really your place to play. So after going through and reading the guidelines for notability, I've decided that my um, topic is notable. 
Um, I've gone out and I've collected three to five secondary resources that I'm going to cite in the content of my article. And now I'm going to start drafting it in my sandbox. Um, so I'll have my introduction. And then I might not know exactly, you know, maybe the article is going to start out without structure. It's going to be just like three to five sentences as a stub. Or maybe I want to add a little bit more structure. And in that case, I'm going to go to an existing Wikipedia article. I could go to the Manual of Style, but why? Um, I'm going to go to an existing Wikipedia article that looks pretty good, see um, what sorts of headings it has, and then bring those into my space. So I've added my headings. I've done it by adding the markup directly. I could also use it using the toolbar at the top. I'm going to publish my changes. One of the really great things about Wikipedia, again, that I'm going to say, is that some things just kind of happen automatically. So I had two headings, and I just had two headings in my article. Um, these are not very good headings that I'm selecting right now, but they exist. And I see that once I create four headings, we have a table of contents, right? So some of the things that we see in Wikipedia articles, we might not know how to create it, they will come. We can go into the markup of other articles that have it and see how, what is or isn't there, okay? Are there any questions about that? So then I really think that we can um, move into getting everybody editing. Um, is this a good place to start? Yeah. OK, great. Um, so again, I'm going to say Google is great for finding the documentation. Um, if you Google revolutionizing Wikipedia, the second link will be this Meetup page. Um, Meetup pages are something that we create for edit-a-thons um, that are uh, helpful for just kind of organizing uh, who's here, why we're here, and what we're working on. Um, this one I have illustrated with um, a, a feminist Wikipedia globe that one of my former students created. Um, they're a zinester and um, awesome individual all around. Um, at the bottom, it would be very helpful to us um, if you RSVP just via the sign up, and that way we'll know um, your usernames, uh, but we will, we will not connect them to your uh, real life names. And so you can just click sign up. You'll see those four tildes appear automatically and publish it. Um, as we were kind of talking about earlier, sometimes when we first edit Wikipedia, the first 10 or 15 minutes are really focused on what you want to edit, right? Um, and identifying absence, going into an existing article that's pretty fleshed out, um, can sometimes be a little bit uh, onerous. So in order to help you with that, Christina created a really fabulous uh, Google Doc. Google um, that I did. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one of our um, digital fellows. Great. Would Would y'all like to talk about it for a second? I don't think she's here. Yeah, she's not here yet. No. She's coming in at later. Great. Okay, so um, this is a list of uh, suggested articles to edit um, with some information about the individuals. And again, this is linked directly from the Wikipedia page. I was also um, poking around. I saw Kara Page is going to be um, at an event at Clags uh, in a few weeks. Um, I was just uh, looking at different um, content that other folks might want to edit um, within our theme of the day. Um, and so um, one of the things is that like, when we are editing, there's always the question of, like, um, should this be a section in an article or should it be a new article itself, right? So if we're editing the article for Sarah Ahmed, um, you know, should Killjoy have, should the concept of like feminist Killjoy have like its own section, right? Or is it just mentioned as a part of, um, you know, 
her works. Um, should Feminist Killjoy, like, do we have enough sources um, and has it been influential enough that it has its own page, right? Um, the article for Hunter College, for instance, um, does not mention the LGBT Social Science and Public Policy Center, right? That's something that can be added into that space. Um, so there are a number of different um, specific articles that we've recommended, which you can choose to edit or not. We encourage, you know, we're all creating knowledge together, and so whatever you identify, we will support you to do today. Um, and we also have, though, um, if you want to get outside of these curated lists, um, we have some more expansive lists from um, our partners at Black Lunch Table, um, those with uh, Wiki Project Feminism, and then also um, Women in Red, uh, which is a hugely active project on Wikipedia, um, which aims to turn red links blue, right, um, through uh, writing biographies about women. Okay, so I think we're all set. Could you talk a little yeah. bit about um, the dashboard? I, I'm not sure if, I think we've got them, people signed up, but I think I'm struggling. I don't know if our link is working to the dashboard. It wasn't. It wasn't, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so I think with the dashboard, um, so I think, it's, it's most important for the remote attendees um, to go to this page. Again, it's if you Google revolutionizing Wikipedia, you will see the um, meetup page uh, in this space. Um, and to go to scroll to the bottom, select the blue sign up button um, and add your username here. For those in the room, um, I am going to go around with my computer um, and uh, grab your usernames um, it, so that we can add you to a private dashboard um, in which we can um, just see the collective impact that we have today. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, folks. Okay. Thank you so, so much. Um, we're, we have some um, post-it notes and some awesome swag that Megan brought um, on each table. Um, we're just going to have some open editing hours. If you need help with something, um, you can put um, a pink flag up on your um, computer using the um, post-it notes. Thank you. And then Stefano uh, Morello from the digital, um, one of our digital fellows from Digital Initiatives is uh, willing to come around and help. I'm happy to do so. I'm sure Megan also. And how many is, are, do we have any like really experienced Wikipedians? You even have some Nice. Awesome. So great. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, just let us know. Is there anything else? No, I think we're good. Stephanie, anything else? Mm -hmm. If anyone needs, if your like laptop crashes and dies, um, a sad death, um, <laughs> that we have a laptop cart um, courtesy of the um, digital initiatives. Um, and I just really want to take a moment to thank also the digital initiatives and digital fellows for coming to help us out. Philip is um, going to be here a little bit later. The Futures Initiative for providing coffee and live stream and all of the things, re reserving this room um, and the snacks in the back. So please help yourselves to that. Um, and the TLC. For, and Laurie Hurston especially for um, guiding us in a discussion from 3.30 to 4.30 at the end of this um, on how to use Wikipedia in the classroom and all of you for coming and everyone who joined us um, via live stream. So thank you all so, so much for being here and I'm looking forward to editing with you. Yes. Yay! Thank you so much. Thank you so much.